encourage them to be the best they could be in whatever it was they wanted to do. So I supported them in their um, in their interests, whatever interests they wanted to have. So for example, um, my, my, my oldest daughter, Susan, the one who's um, head of YouTube, CEO, she went, she, I, she decided she wanted to go to Harvard, which was great. I wanted her to go to Berkeley, but she decided that's where she wanted to go. But then she majored in something that I thought was kind of crazy, French and English history and lit. And I said, well, if you're happy, that's fine, but what are you going to do with it? And um, so she decided that that was what made her happy. But then when she graduated and tried to find a job, it was a little difficult. You know, there weren't any jobs. Um, and so then she decided, she found a job in this company that asked her to check historical facts for two weeks. And then at the end of the two weeks, they said, well, what else can you do? And she said, well, nothing. <laughs> so they said, well, if you can teach yourself to program, maybe we can hire you. So why don't you see what you can do? So she went out to the bookstore, she got herself a book on how to program, and then she got a friend to help her, and six weeks later she knew how to program in something, and they hired her. So, I mean, I supported all her efforts in strange places. And, I, and also I gave her, I said, no matter what it is, you can succeed, no matter, and that's what did it. I mean, it made the difference, it still makes the difference today. I mean, she's bent on making sure that YouTube is the best product out there for the whole world. And, you know, she's not going to give up. Um, and, but she didn't give up anywhere else. And my other daughters also had similar experiences. You know, Anne with 23 and Me, it's the genetics testing company, personal genetics. She got that because she wants to help people be in charge of their own health care. And she doesn't want you to have to go to the doctor to find out information about your own body. She wants you to be able to get it. But it's a big battle, you know, going on. It's an international or low as an American dollar. Because, you know, in America, the FDA has a different view on this. And they think that, you know, you should send the information to the doctor. But the doctor should interpret the information for you. So, I don't think she's going to give up. I don't know how the battle is pursuing. But, you know, there's, you, you have to, you have to support your children in whatever it is they're doing. And I, I did it in elementary school. Whatever they wanted to do, they got to do. And unlike Amy Tan, Amy um, Chua, you know, they had a lot of sleepovers all the time. You know, because she, she wouldn't let her children ever sleep over. Um, they always had to be number one in the class. If they weren't number one in the class, she, they didn't do exercises, you know, a hundred times. Um, so I just had the opposite philosophy. If they, you know, if they didn't do well, I said, well, I'll help you. I provided the resources for that. Um, and I think that with most kids, you know, everybody, all those kids want to succeed. They all want to do well. And they just sometimes they're afraid to tell you. I mean, just like this man that asked the question about, you know, they don't want to tell you they don't know. It's important for them to say, I don't know, and, you know, can we help each other? And uh, you have to have enough self esteem to be able to admit that you don't know. And uh, that's important for kids. So, yeah, all along I did, and then let's see. So, daughter number two, which is Janet, the one that's a professor at UCSF Medical School, she, after she graduated from Stanford, she decided that she wanted to get a master's in African American history. And I said, okay. Why African American history? Anyway, she went to UCLA. She was the only white girl in the program. And I was, okay, that sounds like, you know, and she did it, and she enjoyed it. But I supported that, you know? It's like, okay, whatever it is you want to do, and it's fine with me. 
So they've all had these stories. And, uh, and I think, as I said in that um, conference, I think parents need to be able to trust their kids that, in fact, they can do something that is worthwhile and they don't have to follow the parents. Uh, parents don't know it all, you know? We all are given life, you know, and something you can do in life that is important to you. And the parents should support that. Pues bueno, ha contestado ya una que era la pregunta, el papel de los padres en la educación de los niños. Y eh, pues la otra sería, en México hay un problema en la educación que es muy evidente y es la sobrepoblación en los salones de clases. Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cuál sería un método alternativo en un sistema educativo que haya presenciado en otras partes del mundo? que se podría aplicar para combatir ese problema que tenemos aquí en México. But you have large classes, doesn't matter. And uh, do you know how many my classes right now? Seven kids in one class. So why I'm going to do that? I put them in groups, and they work in teams, and then the teams work report to me. You can do the same thing in elementary school. You put them in groups and have them work in teams. And uh, even with little kids, they will do the same thing, give them some kind of a project. And I have been teaching in classes with huge numbers for years. So, um, at 70 is actually, I think last year I had 80. And this year I've, it's, I've got a different program, so I know it's like a lot. But um, some of the other teachers also have large classes. It's based on, it's all project-based learning, what, where you can put them in groups or where they work together. And uh, it works. I mean, I mean I'd, I'd love to show it to you. I do have a new building now, Paul. I just opened two months ago. They built a, it's called the Media Arts Center. Um, it's 25,000 square feet. And, what it is, is a, it's a demonstration of this type of education in all these different classrooms. And you can see what it looks like. So in none of the classrooms do you see the teachers standing in front of the room and the None. They're all working in groups. So that, that's one way that you can work, solve the problem with large classes. And um, so the, the teams work, you know, to, they, they work to sort of compete with each other, as you can imagine. And uh, they all want to win. It's kind of like, you know, soccer, baseball, but they're intellectual to these stuff. Sounds crazy. It works, but not anyway. It's very, it's fun for the kids. They all want to be in the program. And, uh, so, I'm very proud of the students, and I like to show off their work. Um, no. So I would be happy to give you the, the links to the uh, websites and you can see the work that they do. And, uh, any other questions? Yes, it's everything. Right now we are wearing uh, to make some pictures. Like